first, we go to Tony Black looking at the impact on smaller hospital systems in our region to see how they're being impacted and what it means if you need hospital care. Tony? Matt and Megan, healthcare systems like Oswego Health, which operates this urgent care here in Central Square, are one day into a new vaccine mandate, meaning the workforce is fewer. Now, some healthcare systems are saying that there won't be a big impact on them, while others are preparing for the worst. It's challenging uh, within each individual region. Um, it's really all about collaboration. It's Hospitals across the state are now down workers. Effective at midnight, those who were not vaccinated had to resign from their jobs unless their employer allowed a grace period. It's a mandate hitting big hospitals and smaller ones. Yeah, what we lost was uh, about uh, anywhere between two and a half and five percent of our workforce. While not sharing the number of people out of a job at Rome Health Hospital, COO Ryan Thompson says they don't anticipate their patients to be impacted by cuts. So we understand where our volumes are every single day and we make adjustments based off of that. We also look at projecting where we're going to be going forward to make sure that we have enough staff available to be able to meet the needs of the community. Community Memorial in Hamilton lost less than 10 people but said in a statement there is no disruption to services. The Oneida Health CEO sharing a different message. In a statement he said we now face a challenge that could very well result in the health care crisis for our community and region. The new COVID vaccine mandate for health care providers and staff may in the end result in reducing capacity for care. He says Utica and Syracuse hospitals have reached capacity, so Oneida Health is now sending patients needing specialized care to other hospitals throughout the state. We have, uh, we actually have twice a week phone calls with all of the hospitals within the region. Thompson says weekly phone calls with regional hospitals discuss what types of patients can get care and where ones who cannot can find it. Rome Health and Community Memorial say it's all about teamwork right now. The Oneida Health CEO continued to say that they are preparing for the worst case scenario and that being that the unvaccinated staff staff members leave the industry completely. He says there are always requests for higher pay, but the hospital cannot charge more for their services, which he said could lead to a financial crisis in the healthcare field. Drug Enforcement Administration out with an alert on Monday regarding the drastic increase in fake prescription pills containing fentanyl and meth. So far, the administration has seized more than 9.5 million counterfeit pills this year alone, which is more than they had in the past two years combined. Alora Lagarde reports new at six tonight. Counterfeit pills containing fentanyl and meth are being mass produced and sold as legitimate prescriptions. That's the warning from the DEA. The Onondaga County District Attorney's Office says they believe the pills are being ordered off the internet, coming from China and Mexico and then into New York. We're not going to get it under control when we let drug dealers, when we arrest drug dealers, and they just go back on the street. The DEA says in New York they've seen an increase in counterfeit pills by 113 percent. The pills are made to look like Oxycontin, Percocet, Vicodin, Xanax, and Adderall. But taking that pill could cost you your life. You have a 42 percent chance of obtaining a pill that could be laced with, with fentanyl, which would be the cause of your death. David Song with the DEA says you can't tell the difference between a real pill and a fake, and people of all ages and backgrounds are potential victims. The DEA increased investigations into counterfeits by 300 percent. We've had 93,000 people die of a drug overdose just in the last year. It's, it's historic, and it's really unfortunate, and it's because of a direct link to these counterfeit pills that are being put on the streets by the Mexican cartels. First Chief DA Rick Tronfio says Congress and state lawmakers need to address the problem with harsher penalties for counterfeit drug dealers. People are dying from overdoses and then continue to not address the problem of influx coming in from other countries and uh, minimizing accountability for people who sell drugs. Son and Trumpino both say turning to the streets isn't the right answer and to only take medications prescribed to you by a medical professional. Learning more about a problem causing concern in one backyard in the Valley neighborhood of Syracuse. There's a sinkhole there. We looked into what it means when one turns up and the problems it could cause for the surrounding area. Mary Keeler reports. Last Tuesday, we introduced you to Deborah Priester. He found what was about the size of a gopher hole. And so he picked up a cinder block to put over the gopher hole in the attempt to block the hole. But the 
cinder block went straight down through the hole and he heard it continuously go down and down and down. She's got a sinkhole in her yard and right now she's not sure who will be able to fix it. The city of Syracuse has determined it's on private property with no city infrastructure nearby. I decided to ask an expert why sinkholes start in the first place. Is it surprising that a sinkhole, a sinkhole could turn up here in, in the Syracuse area? No, I mean, there are areas in Syracuse where there have been sinkholes. Professor Dawit Nagusi says you might think of Florida as a hot spot for these cracks in the ground, but New York can get them too. It can be from a leaking pipe or an opening in a sewer line underground. We have a lot of uh, shale and limestone bedrock and carbonates, gypsum and salt. Uh, these are the, the, the types of bedrocks that, that are favorable for forming sinkholes. While Deborah Priester is worried about her yard, she's even more concerned with the impact on her neighbors and their safety. Professor Nagusi says the best agencies to contact are the DEC, the United States Geological Survey, and the Army Corps of Engineers. You really need to be careful to see uh, where the sinkhole is, what the cause of the sinkhole may have been. It's not clear what caused this Syracuse sinkhole. Priester has reached out to all groups who could help her deal with a huge hole in her backyard.